Welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Today is Thursday, March 4th, 2021. This is Alex with another installment. And I just wanted to check in, provide a little proof of life. Right now I'm going through exams. And so multitasking is becoming a little more difficult. But it's been about a week since the last episode. And uh, the last episode was a, uh, a prayer, if I recall right. So I felt like it's about time I check back in and um, let's see if I can't riff a little bit off the top um really i i just wanted to uh to continue harping on on the significance of of being a, a corporate cowboy entrepreneurializing ideas and getting ahead by way of innovation um I think I think a lot of individuals, a lot of groups of individuals, organizations, corporations, we'll call them, uh, I think it's pretty evident that they adhere to a form of groupthink that is otherwise detrimental to their growth, to their evolution, to their continued existence and it's a little hard to talk around and elaborate on without um without treading into murky waters <laughs> but i mean it, it can definitely be addressed on an individual level i think it's i think it's better done on the organizational level because ultimately it boils down to the capability of leadership the 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 capacity that the leadership team has in order to drive their group forward to drive their organization forward and a corporate cowboy, whether they know it or not, has a lot to say, has a lot to do with the direction an organization goes in. Most folks, when they're on the payroll, um, when they're salaried or when they're contracted, um, they they let themselves get carried away with organizational missions, with the organizational culture. and um, pretty much follow become become followers for lack of a better word i didn't want to come out and say that they become bitches once they get on the on 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 wages bitches on wages but ultimately that's that's the truth i mean when you have a job and you're just over broke that's what a job is right when you're living check to check you don't do a lot to rock the boat, <clears throat> but an organizational mission necessarily has to be carried out. And that starts from the very top, from leadership. So if the leadership deviates at all from the organizational mission, what use, what good are you to an organization that does not follow their mission? Right. So I guess you could say that you learn by example that um, that rarely has there been a viable, <laughs> a viable instance of do what I say and not what I do, because folks who don't practice what they preach, they end up getting. Hold on. It's not even stabbed in the back that they they. they <laughs> They end up reaping what they sow, and 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 if what they sow is is activity, is that trife life gangster shit? If that's what they sow, but they act like they don't, when it comes time to reap it, and they're surprised, 
that's their fault. That's that's how they led. That's the type of leader they were. This is the type of shit that I love putting into words and <clears throat> speaking on it with other associates when I get the chance. And <clears throat> the occasions are few and far in between. I And I feel like these conversations take place in 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 spaces and uh take place in times when when folks are on a similar wavelength i mean it's it it happens it happens when folks are like deep in thought when they're really deep in thought when they're really vibing on a on a conversation and they're on the same page and reading through the same page and can flip the page onto uh, another sheet, another chapter, and keep up with one another and be on the same wavelength without without necessarily jumping to conclusions. And, and if anyone does happen to jump to conclusions, they can remain professional about it, remain a consummate professional about it. Be cognizant of any biases they might have, any preferences they might have, stereotypes they adhere to or observe because all of that shit at the end of the day informs the type of per the type of person the type of professional you are not just on the job but off the job as well i feel like conversations like these i had when i was a high schooler not really when i was a middle schooler when i was a middle schooler i was out fucking around and just hustling really um i don't i don't think i had a, a normal middle school career i mean and i was young as it was but as a high schooler i was able to uh associate with with uh more diverse groups of individuals um i mentioned previously that i wasn't the popular guy i was known i was pretty well known but i was by no means the popular guy, the smartest guy, the the jock, or or the most handsomest. Like that, nah, that wasn't me. I was I I like to get around to a, every group, to any group that I could share a couple words with, maybe find some common ground, create an inside joke or two, and 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 in that way, craft craft my skeleton key with any group. I came into contact with with any group I interacted with or with any group that chose to interact with me because there were those occasions where a group might come to me for uh a a an unbiased or a neutral perspective uh, uh a third party uh, a third party perspective and and I want to I, I want to say I was respected and that's because I created that atmosphere where I start with respect first, you know, you got to give respect to get respect and, um, sharing that experience, sharing, sharing that respect with my peers, opened a lot of doors for me, opened a lot of windows for me. A lot of opportunities came my way, some good, some bad. And I'm not going to lie and said, I made all the right choices because my record proves that I haven't. Not not just my professional record, my criminal record proves that I haven't, and so I've I've walked down multiple paths. I've doubled back on a couple of them, and there are still others that I'm planning a second mission through or a return mission. It doesn't even have to be the second; it'll be the third, the fourth, the nth. But I'm planning a return mission into. Um, one of those, one of those being corporate, sticking with the corporate theme. Once you've had a taste of corporate and you know what corporate is about, how corporate operates, that's, that's, that I think is the greatest game of life. Uh, folks say that the most dangerous game is quote unquote, the human <laughs> bro. You ever try to hunt a group of them? <laughs> that's the most dangerous game. I'm talking about that corporate war shit and that's some corporate cowboy shit because 
when you're hunting an entire firm, an entire organization, it could be an entire conglomerate. I mean, you scale it to the size that you want. When the skeleton key you have to craft is double-edged, that's when you know you're doing something. You're doing something right. You're, you're, you're hitting the right buttons, poking the right locks. That's when you know that you're, you're doing something. You're not just making waves, but you're actually um, penetrating safe boxes. And in the context of corporate, I feel like um, I feel like a, a lot of a lot of kids, and I, I do mean kids, kids that are around the age group of eighteen, maybe a little before, a little after. A lot of kids today don't know how to uh, navigate the real world. Don't have a grasp on what the real world runs on. And the real world doesn't run on fucking clout. It doesn't run on social media likes. The real world gives a fuck about how many followers you have and, and your reposts and your reshares. It doesn't give a fuck, man. That's, that's corporate for you. Corporate is the real world. What you need to do is expose yourself. Expose yourself to corporate. And I don't mean... Expose yourself as a fucking sucker or a bitch. I mean, expose yourself to the experience that is corporate. That's going to be voluntarily putting yourself inside of corporate. Inserting yourself into corporate. And I <clears throat> do my utmost to not speak in terms of corporate war. Because y'all aren't ready for that shit. Few people aren't ready for that shit. If I drop it now, all in one episode, the episode would be hours long, just chock full of material. AI couldn't keep up with the fucking transcript on whatever it is you're listening on. <laughs> um, <clears throat> machine learning would fucking would would cease to recommend this to you. So I do it in sound bites. I do it in little clips. Why? Because. I feel like my target audience, my target demographic are are necessarily going to be those young and aspiring professionals. They don't necessarily have to be young, but let's be real here. The best time to get anything, anyone, is when they're young because they're still moldable. They still have, they still have that tenacity to want to learn, to want to fit in, not necessarily to want to conform, but the want for validation and that's what you get with social media nowadays that's why folks create one or two or three profiles with different fucking material on it why because they need they they themselves whether they know it or not subconsciously need that validation and so they will target their own demographics based on the content they produce so say there is a profile out there exclusively on <clears throat> chocolate milk and uh what you're after is the target demographic that likes enjoys consumes chocolate milk and those will be those will necessarily be the folks who look for your content who are after that hashtag chocolate milk who are constantly liking and commenting and and sharing anything that you post alternatively you can have another um Another page running alongside it for uh, mechanical lead pencils and your target demographic are going to be those people who necessarily use mechanical lead pencils in their day to day lives personally professionally on the job uh, pushing paper pushing pencils on their little desk job or signing contracts drafting agreements just folks who who know about the, the who are connoisseurs of smooth writing, smooth, uh, smooth operating lead pencils, and 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 the sleekness and and the aestheticness, and this might all be one person, one person who has multiple of these profiles, seeking validation in other individuals for the preferences, for the biases that they have. Uh, for the interests, 
for the um yeah let, let, let's say let's say for for the um <clears throat> what, what is it for the i think it was good with the interest i had one additional one one other synonym for that but but for the interests and you want to share those interests with individuals and you want to feel folks want to feel like their interest either isn't weird either either isn't weird or is cool and yeah i mean that that overlaps with clout a little bit i totally get it and that is entirely dependent on the type of content that you share whether it's created uh whether it's original whether it's ripped off and remixed it has to do with a lot of that but the business <sighs> The business of motivation at the end of the day, and you see how I, how I shifted gears and I just used but as like an interjection, but the business of motivation, the business of motivation at the end of the day is asking oneself, is asking oneself whether or not. your interests are shared by others in a positive or a negative light i'll repeat that one more time and then i'll i'll dive into that because i just i just fucking made it up but i'll elaborate the question is whether or not your interests are relatable and folks view them in a positive or negative light so a lot of the posts that you'll come across the corporate cowboys instagram page they they look a little ominous i won't lie i get it i mean some of them speak on life some of them speak on death and others speak on everything in between and folks might might tend to think that it's a little deep for instagram man i mean like instagram is about looking at big booty hoes and thirsting over over posts on on luxury cars and yachts and uh world travel pictures and and fucking delectable food that you will never taste like a1 or a5 or however fucking high it goes now wagyu beef dishes but in reality even those posts can be viewed in a negative light, right? I mean, obviously there's some enhancement, there's some aug augmenting that takes place in the in terms of picture editing, in terms of Photoshop, and it's all meant to accentuate certain features in those posts uh, that that attention is meant to be directed towards. The posts on the Incorporating Associates, Corporate Cowboys page, uh, comprise of a somewhat more ominous tone. And I hope, I believe, they come across in a professional tone. And to me, professionalism is synonymous with neutrality. And that's being unwavering, Un unwavable, um, impenetrable in a sense that that they just that professionals are not meant to be shaken easily at least. So you'll find that the quotes posted on and overlaid over those uh, over those pictures provided by. Um, our gracious contributors. Some of those can be read in a positive light. Some of those can be read in a negative light. Some of those can be read either way. And um, a lot of that, a lot of that requires some kind of mental exercise. Um, folks who have uh, undergone, I'm not going to say traumatic experience, but who have, have undergone stressful experiences and have come out uh, still alive have survived 
And that, that doesn't mean having been successful or, or having been unsuccessful. Just coming out alive, it, it's, it's enough to relate on. It's enough to be able to read the post and relate to them. Like that's the depths that the posts on the Corporate Cowboys page seek to attain. The type of depth that where you read the post and you can read it once, twice, maybe even three times and get a different meaning every time. And it's just supposed to be, it's just supposed to get deeper and deeper with every read. It's a, it's, it used to be a personal goal of mine, um, to be a, a poet, to be a writer as, um, as useless as that sounds, <laughs> but now, um, operating in the law, operating within a legal professional business context, I find that crafting words, crafting phrases, crafting quotes essentially being a wordsmith it's the essence of being a professional it is after all how how you craft the skeleton key in uh to use in your social interactions day to day and and, and the skeleton key you, you might say well isn't that just your personality i mean if if you are yourself and you are your natural self, just be yourself and people will like you. No, man, there are some people whose whose selves I would, and and I might fit in this category, whose selves ought to be eliminated and um, whose, whose selves are, are obsessive, are compulsive, disorderly. And uh, some folks might view being a professional as, as that type and, that is uh that that's a contempl that that's a contemplation that professionals have to deal with in in their everyday um in their everyday business in, in their everyday uh practices because when you're objective when you are neutral you have to be able to um relate at least relate to both sides and yeah i mean we didn't all start off as fucking killers and corporate assassins in the fucking boardroom nah i mean we all had moms we all had dads some of us had one or the other and still others had none but at the end of the day at some point all of us had a degree of innocence that might have got compromised that might have gotten violated and hence, that's the, the, the stressful experience I'm talking about. We've been put through stressful experiences in order to grow, in order to mature, in order to adapt and survive. Having come out alive from our childhoods and into adulthood, some folks still retain that, uh, that childlike innocence, that creativity, that innovative spirit that we had when we were younger that we had when we were kids it's something that i pray i haven't lost that i pray i haven't gone down this corporate path of uh desensitize desensitization and dehumanization and and emotionless work and that my creativity that that the limits to my creativity are still uh, are still flexible are still malleable because I recognize that I'm not young I recognize that I'm not innocent I recognize that I'm a fucking sinner bro like <laughs> I recognize that I'm I'm guilty I'm a criminal and as as proud as I am to admit it because obviously I, I I can't say sorry to some folks at this point like who the fuck am I gonna say sorry to I I can't repent because then that that requires me admitting that the path that I'm down the path that I'm on now is erroneous and it can't be erroneous otherwise I would already be dead that's how I know good exists I have to be good otherwise I got Otherwise, I have quote-unquote good people gunning for me. That's, 
the, that's the wrong way to fucking look at it. I have to be the good one gunning for bad people. I have to be the good one gunning after evil people. And those can be individuals. Those can be groups of individuals. We call them organizations. We call them corporations. Scale it up to however large you want. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna fucking wrap this one up. Have a nice weekend. Peace.